Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are continuing our video series today by looking at algebra and how to collect like terms. And if you don't know what a like term is, you're definitely going to want to watch our previous video where that was explained in a fair bit of detail. In this video, we're going to do a very quick recap on like terms. Uh, just to refresh your memory, we're going to look at some basic rules and some vocabulary, some worked examples, and then talk about what's coming up. Let's get straight into it. Let's have that quick recap on what like terms are. So remember from our last video that like terms are terms with the same variable or letter combination and the same powers. So that's the two really important part. The number in front of the algebra component being what we call the coefficient is not important. Only the letter combination and the power combination. Let's look at some examples. So all whole numbers, fractions and decimals without any algebra letters at all are all considered like terms. 8m and 15m are like terms because the m is the same. The 8 and the 15 are irrelevant. We're only interested in looking at matching the m's. x squared um, is the part here that we're looking for. We've got 3x squared and 80x term x squared. They are like terms because the power is the same and the letter variable is the same as well. We've got some examples now of what are not like terms. It's very tempting to think that 15x and 15y are like terms because the 15 is the same, but remember we're matching the letter, the um, pronumeral, but not the coefficient, the number. 7m and 7 are not like terms, even though they both have a 7, one has an m and the other doesn't. And lastly, 7x squared and a 7x to the power of 4 are not like terms, even though the 7 is the same, not relevant, even though the x is the same, definitely relevant, but the power is different. So that means they are not like terms. So you might be wondering, why do we need to know whether something is a like term or not? It is important because here are our rules. Only like terms can be added and only like terms can be subtracted. Now this is going to become very clear once we do some worked examples, but I'm going to give you um, some information now about some ways you might be asked to add and subtract like terms. So there's some different ways that you might see in an exam or in a textbook and the vocabulary is the key part for you to know what to do when you've been given that question. So firstly you might be asked to collect like terms. So collect means to, um, to find and match them and bring them together. Um, you might be asked to gather them which is another way of saying collect. You might be asked to simplify an expression. So typically an expression, if it's long and it's got lots of parts, simplifying it means making it smaller. Or you might be just simply asked to simplify. So all of these are ways of asking you to find the like terms in an expression, bring them together, and then add and subtract them. Um, this will become very clear very shortly. Do hang in there with me. It all means the same thing. We're adding and subtracting the like terms only. I'm going to give you a little real life scenario just so that you can understand um, how this works because I think if you get what how it works it makes it the rest of it much simpler. So let's imagine that we're walking into a hamburger shop and we want to order something for our family. Now you could walk up to the counter and you could say I have a hamburger, a shake, a hamburger, a fries, a fries, a shake, a hamburger, a fries, a shake, a hamburger, hamburger, fries. The person behind the counter would probably get a little bit annoyed because of how disorganized your order is. Wouldn't it have been better to sit down as a family and work out how many hamburgers there were, how many shakes and how many fries first and then bring that simple order to the counter. So it would make a lot more sense to say I want five hamburgers, three shakes and four fries. Now in this case, what I have done is I have added or collected or gathered or grouped my like foods. I've grouped the hamburgers together, the shakes together and the fries. So we could also think about this fast food order in terms of using letter variables. Okay, so we could say, let the hamburgers be H, let the shakes be S, let the fries be F. And then what I would be doing is I would be simplifying my order and saying the expression for the order is five H's plus three S's plus four F's. So you see, when you are collecting like terms, you only add the hamburgers together, you only add the shakes together, and you only add the fries together. Your final order is a lot simpler than hamburger shake, hamburger fries, fries shake, etc. 
but it still has parts to it. Notice that the five and the three and the four weren't just added together when we use letters. And it'd be the same. I wouldn't walk up to the counter and I wouldn't say, I want 12 things, I want 12 items, um, or I want 12 HSF. That would be quite confusing. They'd be thinking, well, do you want them all put in a blender together and smooshed up? That would be pretty gross. At the same time, you wouldn't go to the counter and say, I want a hamburger shake. Um, I'll have five HSs, thank you. It doesn't work that way. Hamburgers are separate from shakes, separate from fries, but we can add the hamburgers together, we can add the shakes together, and we can add the fries together. And algebra is a little bit the same. So if you think of this fast food scenario, whenever you've got one of these more abstract type problems, remember only like terms can be added and subtracted. Um, so let's have a little bit more about some rules. Can I add the number two to a letter B? Does it become 2B? Well, if you've already cottoned on that 2 and B are not like terms, you'll know that no, you can't. You can't add the two together. Um, they are not like terms, so 2 does not add to B. Let's just imagine that I've got a number 2 on a piece of paper, and let's say that we've got a banana representing our letter B. If I add the two together, I'm still going to have a piece of paper and a banana. I don't suddenly have a Pap banana or pap banana. <laughs> I don't suddenly join them together. They don't get joined when they're added. Um, I would simply write it as 2 plus b because I can't simplify it any further. Obviously, if I had a number two on a piece of paper and five individual bananas, I could add the bananas together, but I can't add the piece of paper to the bananas. So I like to think about the whole numbers in algebra as a physical number written on a piece of paper. And often when I ask students to imagine that, they suddenly get it. No, I can't just add that to something else. Okay, the same letter combinations can be added. So let's think about D this time and let's have that representing a very cute dash hound. Okay, so I could write that as 1D because I've got one dog, but we usually leave that one off when we're writing about algebra. You just simply write D. Now, if I had three dogs, I would it would look something like this. Three dogs added together. I've got D plus D plus D. There are three Ds, three dogs all together. So because of that, I can write that as three D or three dogs. I don't have to write three plus D because remember our whole number three is like a number written on a piece of paper. And now we've just reintroduced something into this equation that wasn't there to start with. We've actually got three physical dogs, three dogs. Another way of thinking about this is I've got one set of three dogs, which is three times one D. So now I've got this one set here so that's just going to be three times D because we don't show that multiplication sign in between. Three lots um, of dogs. Okay, let's do some worked example now. We've used the hamburger example. We've used piece of paper and bananas. We've used some very cute dash hounds. Let's use some more abstract examples. By abstract, I mean there's no physical real life connection. And I'm gonna show you a little strategy that I use to simplify these. Now you'll notice that the key word we're asked here is simplify. Um, so that means, as we heard before, as part of our key vocabulary, we're actually gonna look for the like terms, add those together, keep the terms that are not like separated. Okay, now a lot of students um, don't have a strategy for this. They just inspect it and then write an answer. I think having a strategy, taking a few moments just to write something down as a strategy, um, I see a lot um, fewer mistakes when that happens. So one thing I like to do is I actually like to put a shape around the matching letter terms. So I've got a 2D and then I've got a positive 3D as well. Um, the sign before, this is really, really important. This sign, the plus that goes in front of the 3D that goes with the term that's after it, the 3D. So that means this plus here will go with the 10 because that's after, and the minus here will go with the one because that's after. So that's really important to remember. So in an expression where I've got multiple different kinds of letters, I'll put different shapes around the different letters. Some students prefer to use different color highlighters or to underline um, in different colors. Whatever your strategy is, that is fine. Um, using highlighters in an exam might get a bit messy because you're having to pop lids on and off, whereas just quickly circling some, putting squares around others, clouds around others, and so on is a lot quicker than playing with highlighter pens in an exam situation. 
but it's up to you. Okay, so now what I've got is I've got 2D plus a 3D. So I'm visually inspecting, I'm pulling those two rectangled um, terms down and they are added together. And then 10 take away one is just simply positive nine and that just pops on the end here. You'll notice here that I can't simplify this any further. I can't just now say um, I've got five plus nine and then add that to the D. I cannot do that because these are not like terms. So because they're not like terms, they don't get joined together with the addition function. They just get separated by a plus sign. Our next worked example, we've got some more different types of terms here. This is where my little shapes strategy can come in handy. So for example, these are our like terms. You'll notice now that I've put squares around that, it's really easy to see that 3a and 4b are not like terms with one another. They can hang out there all by themselves. I'm gonna put a circle around that one though, just to remind myself that I'm not adding 3a to 4b. It's a separate type of term. So now I've got the a, b's in squares, just the b's in a circle, and the a's are sitting out with no shape around them. So now it's a very easy thing for me to visually inspect. I've got four a, b, and a three a, b. I'm gonna add those together. Remembering the sign in front goes with the term behind, so I get seven a, b, and then the three a and the four b are not joined up together. They just remain separate terms added with the addition sign between them. Now we're getting a little bit more complicated. 3st take away 8ts plus 2st plus 8t. Now you'll remember from our previous video that we must match the letter combination, but it doesn't matter what order it's in. Um, an st is the same as a ts. And the reason for that is if I think of concrete numbers, four times three is the same as three times four. The order of multiplying is not important. So that means that these are all like terms with one another and 8t hangs on the end which is not a like term. So now I've got three take away eight, which gives me negative five, plus two, which gives me negative three, st plus eight t on the end. My next example, I've got some powers that have been introduced now. So I've got four a, and remember this minus sign must go with the sign afterwards. That's a common mistake people make. They cut it off here and then they add the two together, which is a big no-no. And then you'll see I've got 8x squared and 6x squared are not in the squares, but they are like terms with one another. So now four take away six is negative two. So that gives me negative two a. Eight plus six gives me 14x squared. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Coming up in our future videos, we're gonna be looking at how to write an expression using a worded problem. We're gonna multiply and divide algebra, expand and factorize, and then we've got loads more as part of our algebra series as we move on through senior algebraic techniques. If you found this video helpful, why not tell us? I'd love to hear your comments in the, um, the feed. Tell somebody else, share it with a friend or with a teacher and like and subscribe so you'll always know when new videos are coming up. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of our ongoing subscribers and um, teachers who are sharing our videos with all of the classes. Thank you so much for your support. If you do have any questions, you can contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media as well. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Well, thank you so much for watching our video today. You've been watching McClutchy Mass. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.